Hello. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's talk, side by side with Solar and Elasticsearch. We hope you had a nice day yesterday at the Buzzwords and enjoy the after party. Uh, before we start, I would like to ask two or three questions. How many of you know Solar? Okay, that's nice. How many of you know Elasticsearch? Great. I won't ask the third question then. Uh, before we start uh, our talk about the video search site, I would like to introduce my colleague Radu. Don't hide. Uh, we are working together at Sematext. Uh, he's a father and a husband. Uh, we are working at consulting site. We are working together at a log centralization software called Logzine. He also happens to be an uh, author of uh, Elasticsearch in Action. For available at the Manning Early Access Project. So if you want a nice book about Elasticsearch, here's a guy to talk to. And uh, here's Rafal, my colleague. Uh, we work together on uh, consulting projects. We work together on Logzine. Um, he works with both Elasticsearch and Solar. Uh, he wrote books about both. Um, and he's a general nice guy, a family man. You cannot not like him once you get to meet him. Um, so. Let's uh, let's have an overview of what we're going to talk about today. Uh, as Rafal said, we actually didn't say that, but anyway, uh, <laughs> let's let's imagine the use case that we want to um, build search uh, over some video metadata. So stuff like who the uploader is, the title, the description, and so on. So um, at this point, let's assume that we don't know which uh, which one fits best, whether it's Solar or Elasticsearch. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you an overview of how you do it in both search engines, from indexing, to searching, to doing some facets, some analytics, and to administering and scaling out your cluster. We'll start with the data. Let's assume that our documents, the videos we're going to index, actually the metadata about the videos, are stored in a JSON. A simple JSON file we'll show you. We'll for development mode, we'll use a schema-less mode for both Solar and Elasticsearch. That's why we don't care about schema yet. Uh, then, after we index the data, we want to run searches on it. Both, of course, Elasticsearch and Solar provides that functionality. We also want to give data the meaning. So we use facets in Solar. We can use aggregations and percolations in Elasticsearch. We will talk about it later. Of course, a single node can be tuned to the way that is going to run smooth, but at a certain point, you end up with scaling out and the need of it. So we'll also show you how to scale out both solutions. Finally, maybe not finally, you want to do backups. And if you don't do, you will do it. Uh, I was at the point where I didn't do them and lesson learned, uh, that's a fact. And finally, we'll get to an ecosystem around both of those because it's large and there are many tools that will help you on your way to getting to the final product in production. Let's start with a simple uh, data file. Our data files looks like this. It's a simple JSON with uh, a few fields. Some of them are single-valued, like the ID or the title, and some of them are multi-valued, like the tax field, which has an array of values. You can look the, all, the, all the data files at the provided GitHub account. There are also commands that will allow you to index them without any, any trouble. So uh, let's now index the data. By the way, this is a real car. I'll switch to the video uh, and show you something. Uh, so we start with unpacking both Solar and Elasticsearch. We choose the 4.8 version to fit the presentation, and we choose 1.1.0 Elasticsearch. We unpack those two. It takes a bit longer with Solar because the package is a bit uh, waits more. Uh, after we unpack it, in terms of Solar, uh, Elasticsearch works with schema as by default. Uh, in Solar, we have to do some additional things. What we will do is we actually will remove the default collection provided with Solar, and we'll replace it with the schemaless example provided again with the, the uh, example deployment Solar uh, has. After that, we'll need to copy it. Just a second. So we copy. It's called this example schemaless, and now we can just start them. We hit. Be in Elasticsearch with Elasticsearch, and we hit Java jar start, and we're and we're ready. Okay, we started Solar. We can see that, and Elasticsearch is starting as well. 
After that, we can use the commands provided at GitHub to index the data. It's really simple. However, there is one additional thing I would like to mention when it comes to Solar, that the uh, files that are on GitHub they need to be surrounded by square brackets because that's what the solar format is. After that, if you, you can see that they are indexed and ready for searching. And we will do that in just a few. Uh, okay, let's get back. Of course, we talked that we want to use the schemaless uh, first, but in production environment, you usually don't want to go with schemaless. Why? Because you want uh, custom analysis defined by you to match your use case. In terms of solar, we do that by, by altering the schema XML file or providing uh, our own. We push, the we push all the configurations to Zookeeper, which uh, holds the configurations, is responsible for helping with overseer election and stuff like that, provides the cluster state. Uh, schema XML is a really simple file, an XML file that prov provides all the fields that you will use and that uh, show your index structure and provides all the field types that define your analysis. With Elasticsearch, you probably know that you have the mapping as the equivalent of the schema and you can put it uh, using the put mapping API and you can also use the put mapping API to extend the existing mapping with new fields. Um, you can see that it's in JSON, but the key difference here is that with Elasticsearch, you can have multiple uh, mappings in the same index. So this is useful when you have, for example, uh, videos which have, uh, the documents have one structure and users where documents have a different structure and you can put them in the same index under different mapping types. Uh, let's move to searching. If you, if you want to run a quick query on Elasticsearch, you would uh, hit the search endpoint and you would uh, look at the queue parameter and put your Lucene um, query string there. You will get a JSON reply with the uh, results ranked by relevancy score by default. And you can see in the source field there, uh, there's the original JSON that you indexed. When it comes to solar, we need pro to provide the collection name we want to run searches against, and we choose the request handler we want to run our searches to. We choose the select one, which is here. Uh, it basically provides the functionality of getting our parameters and passing it to the correct request parser, uh, query parser. Uh, as you can see, the query is again simple as it can be. We pass in the queue parameter with Elasticsearch, and because by default uh, solar doesn't return score for each document, we needed to uh, alter the field this parameter. That's why we say star, which means give me all the stored fields in result, and the score. Uh, the result returned by SOAR is by default XML file, which contains all the stored fields. We don't have source in SOAR. Uh, and you can change the response format to whatever you choose, and it's available like JSON, CSV files, serialized PHP, Java bin, and all the other stuff that's, that's there. However, the standard query, your re-request query, is not uh, something you'll stick for long, apparently. So that's why uh, Solar provides you with multiple uh, request pars query parsers, actually. Uh, sorry, and we can do the we can. Uh, they have multiple parameters, different ones, and they just parse our queries. For example, here we use the standard query parser provided by Solar. We want to get the documents with the Elasticsearch in title and logs in the tax field, and we just run a simple query. We can also uh, leverage the uh, query parser uh, functionality and remove the logical operator from the query so, and pass it with the additional queue parameter. With Elasticsearch, you have the query DSL. Uh, and I just want to ask who went to the query DSL uh, talk from yesterday. All right, so for those of you who weren't, the point is that you would put a JSON as the payload to your HTTP request, and in that JSON, you would define your queries. Um, in this case, you can see there's a bool query uh, which has a should clause, and uh, that bool query uh, can be used to wrap other kinds of queries, for example, the match query, which will look for Elasticsearch in the title, and the term query, which will look for uh, the exact term logs in the tags field. Um, let's move to, uh, to some use cases that might not be typical to a search engine. For example, um, 
let's say that we want to be alerted every time we get uh, a new video uploaded with Elasticsearch in the tags field. Um, and to do that, we can use the percolator. And I want to ask who was at the percolator workshop um, talk yesterday? <laughs> it's a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, you too, <laughs> right. Um, so this is a typical use case. Um, the point is uh, you can index queries as you normally index documents, except you put them in the percol in dot per percolator type. And then you can hit the percolate endpoint with documents. And what you'll get back is the list of queries uh, that would match the document that you percolate. In Solar, we don't have percolator apparently, uh, but imagine a, f a certain use case. We want to have more diversified results with Solar. For example, we would like to have a single document, a single video uh, returned for each uploader of our events. So what we can do is we can use a grouping co also called field collapsing functionality. We can run Q elastic search like the query we've uh, already run, and we turn on the grouping functionality by specifying the group equals true parameters, and we specify the name of the field we want to group on. In this case, uploaded by, which holds our uploaders. What Solar will do is it will take the terms from the uploaded by field and will divide our results, returning a single document by default for each of the terms in the uploaded by field. So we'll get a single document for new thinking communication, which is uploader for Berlin Buzzwords videos, for example. Of course, we can alter the default uh, functionality to return more documents. The key point here is that Solar will return the most relevant documents for each of the groups. Of course, in real world, data is not flat at all. So uh, both of the, the great search engine sort and Elasticsearch provides the support for hierarchies. Imagine the fact that we would like to have uh, names of the presenters, like we asked to here, uh, divided into different fields. So we want to avoid cross matches, so uh, Radu Kuch wouldn't be a match, right? So what we can get from uh, Solar and Elasticsearch is first the nested document support. It's uh, rely on, on, on the block join uh, functionality provided by Lucene library. And actually, it indexes the, the, the parent and the uh, nested documents in the same segment, so they are near, and they can be searched in a very efficient way. The other thing that we can use is the parent-child functionality, which in Solar is a pure query time join. In uh, Elasticsearch, you need to provide the uh, document identifier, the parent document identifier for the, each of the child documents. Uh, we also want to give our data meaning. In terms of Solar, we have the facet functionality. Uh, what facet is, is actually a term uh, connected to some number, usually a count. Uh, to build a simple tag cloud out of our search results, we would use the field faceting on the tags field, and what Solar will do is we will return all the top count tags, uh, the terms from the tags field, up with the count specifying how many documents were found with the given tag. We also may want to have a variance of that. Uh, we will, if we are only in, interested in some of the uploaders, not all of them, we can tune the query to return uh, only the facets for those two uploaders we are interested in. And that's why Sol provides the facet query functionality. And in this case, the facet query would return only counts for Lucin Solar Revolution and new thinking communications. With Elasticsearch, you also have facets, but they have been superseded recently by aggregations. Um, and I want to ask again, who was at the <laughs> aggregation stock from yesterday? <laughs> All right, so um, then I'll quickly sum it up. Uh, Basically, aggregations are like facets if you only use them one by one. Um, and they are divided in, there are multiple types and they are divided in two categories. There are bucket aggregations, like this terms aggregation here, which will get you like a tag cloud, uh, because it will make you a bucket of documents out of, each, uh, out of each tag. So the documents that match that tag will be in one bucket and the next tag another bucket. Uh, and there are metrics aggregations, which will only return you one number. So, for example, the cardinality aggregation will get you the number of unique values in a certain field. Now, the real power of facets is... Aggregations. 
the real power of aggregations. I said facets? Yes. The, no. Okay. So the real power of aggregations is the, the fact that you can nest them. The, um, the bucket aggregations can have sub-aggregations. So for example, um, we can get the tag cloud, but also for each tag, we can get the number of videos uploaded uh, yeah, for each tag each month. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. <coughs> for him, it uh, does. Okay, uh, don't kill me. Uh, those two things are not equal when it comes to functionality. However, the subset of functionality in solar we can do with uh, pivot facets. Uh, we, again, uh, set the facet parameter to true to enable them, and we use the fiv facet pivot uh, parameter. What we'll get in result is that solar will nest the uh, facets here, facet counts. For example, in this, in this case, we will get the tags uh, group of facets, and under each tag we'll get the views and the number of documents with the uh, given view. It's not as powerful as aggregations, but still sometimes it's worth checking out. What we would like to show you now, at least a small portion of it, is that we like to graph things, all of them. We have a monitoring solution called SPM in Sematex, we have uh, search analytics, we also do graph logs, and what we will now show you is a small portion of logging, uh, graphing, right? Yes, yeah, so how many of you already know Kibana? I know some of you don't, do, all right. So Kibana is a... Uh, okay, we started? Yeah, okay. So Kibana is a visualization tool built built uh, to work with Elasticsearch. Um, and you can build your own dashboards and uh, basically graph all the things. Um, this is just an example of what you can do. Uh, on the left side, you have a widget that will show you uh, the breakdown of videos per, for each tag. And on the right, you have also a breakdown of videos for each tag. But this time, we'll not show the number of videos, but the number of views. And if you search for something, then all the graphs will be automatically adjusted to only the results that match your search. Uh, there's also a, uh, or actually more than one fork of uh, Kibana that should work for solar. I didn't actually use them, but they work. And when it comes to uh, operations, <laughs> um, when it comes to operations, you probably want to monitor uh, your search engine. Uh, there are m lots of monitoring products out there. We have our own SPM that works with Elasticsearch, Solar, and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, but for now, we want to show you what works out of the box. And with Elasticsearch, uh, you have the stats APIs, which will get you uh, lots of metrics from how much time you spent indexing to how fast your queries are, or how much memory is used, and stuff like that. In Solar, it's not uh, a single API that is available. However, we can get statistics from all the uh, ambients that are provided in JMX by Solar. So we can connect to the JMX using a simple tools just like JConsole from the GDK that you have, and we can check each plugin that uh, is registered in this JMX ambience, and we can check things like number of requests, percentiles, error counts, average response times, average run times, and stuff like that. The thing is that all those statistics are per node uh, displayed in the Solar Admin by default. So if you go to the Solar Admin, you can see the standard, uh, the top image, the standard stuff that when it comes to memory usage, and of course the bottom image shows uh, some statistics uh, fetched from the JMX, like we can see the handler start, uh, timestamp, we can see the request number, errors, timeouts, total time, averages, percentiles, and so on. In addition to that, we have the cluster state, which is stored in the Zookeeper and provides us with the information about all the cluster-related uh, things, like where the nodes are, how they are named, what are the replicas, what are the, what are the leaders, how healthy they are, and stuff like that. You can just get it from Zookeeper or, or from Solar. We told you in the beginning about the backup. However, we left the left side of Solar or with the backup empty. That's on purpose. Because you can do a hack in Solar Cloud, actually, to enable multiple replication handlers. Uh, however, the data will be replicated outside to a second cluster or a, sec or a secondary node or something like that. However, that's not automated enough 
in uh, at least for from our point of view to be considered a viable backup solution because you can't just restore it on demand you can't store a snapshots or in a given time another that's not a viable solution that we would use apparently and it, that can be used without additional automation with elasticsearch as with everything you have an api this one is called snapshot restore and the point is you, you would define a location where you want to store your backups, and then you can start running incremental backups by hitting the snapshot API there. And uh, you can also use the same API to restore. And this works, um, this works across all the data uh, of your cluster. So um, speaking of clusters, let, let us show you how you would scale out both Solar and Elasticsearch. And I want to ask, how many of you already know how Solar scales? Right? Okay. How about Elasticsearch? A bit more. Okay. Great. So we'll start our, again, video uh, with Solar. What we'll start with is a single node deployment. We'll start it and run it in a sole cloud mode. However, we don't use external Zookeeper to keep, the sing to keep things simple. Instead, we'll use an embedded one by specifying the ZK run parameter. We also specified this, uh, the host, and we just start Solar. It started. However, to create a collection, we need a configuration to be uploaded to ZooKeeper. Uh, so we can just check it. Well, there's no collections available, so let's create one. To do that, as I already mentioned, we need the configuration stored in ZooKeeper. Uh, we will do that by using a standard script provided in Solar de uh, deployment that's the ZK client path, we can upload config to a given Zookeeper, specifying the configuration directory and the name of our collection. It will upload it, all the files that are relevant, and we can now use the collections API to create a new collection. We'll name it scale this, we'll give it two sh one, a single shard with replication one, which means it will only create a leader, and we use the collection name called pbus, which we recently uploaded. Let's give it a second, actually a two. And we can now refresh the admin page, and we can see that the scale this collection has been created with one shard and placed on a node. Let's now add a second node. Because we are running on a single PC, we started the node on just a different JETI port, and we pointed the ZK host parameter to a local host 9983, which means that they will, it will, the next node will use the same Zookeeper which was embedded in this first one. It started, started actually, and uh, we can see that the number of nodes were updated, and we can now add a replica here. So to do that, we'll again leverage the collections API with a command called add replica. We specify the shard identifier, the collection name, and we specify the node name on which we should uh, create the replica. The thing is that Solar won't automatically place your replica, the on the node you want it to be. So that's why you need to specify the name of the node. You can get the name out of the cluster state. Uh, however, it's built very easily to guess the name because it's an IP address, the port, underscore solar. So let's run the command. OK. It executed, and now we can look at the admin panel to see what happened. As we can see, we have two collections now, single leader, and a second one, which is a replica, and is active. And now, let's create a third node, running again on the same PC with a different, with a different port. Start it, and let's create a second replica here, so we'll have high availability on a single PC. Uh, uh, again, collections API were used, was used, and we have it. Let's look at the uh, two replicas. Oh, okay. So now a little bit of magic. Uh, let me let's imagine that we have a certain use case. We've indexed our data. We don't have our initial data available. What to do when it comes to a time when we don't have the capacity of a single node to handle data? So give us a response to that, which means that it can split the shard out of the box. Let's do that. Let's split our shard into two new ones. We do that again with a simple API command, which is the split shard, as you can see in the bottom. We specify the collection name and the shard we want to split. 
It's as simple as running that command, and we'll see in the panel, admin panel what happened. Actually, SOAR created two collections, uh, two shards out of the, our initial one, the shard 1.0 and the shard 1.1. Of course, all the replicas were created. They are now recovering while I refresh it. And after that, you can see that we have three uh, shards being available. One, the original one, which is empty. And Solar left it on purpose. There are many uh, use cases where that's uh, how it should be, because people still run uh, queries against that shard. However, that, collection, that shard will be empty. Solar in the background distributed all the data. It divided the data uh, in more or less half and pushed some of the data to one shard, some of the data to the other shard. The hash ranges were divided, so the cluster state is again uh, stable and useful. And we can now, if we want, delay, delete the initial shard and we will be left with two, two shards. Of course, on large data, that can be a painful process, but if you don't have any other solutions, that's one of the available. Let's now look at Elasticsearch. Okay, so Elasticsearch is... Uh, this is going? Yes, it is. Okay, so Elasticsearch is clustered uh, by default. So if you just start one node, it will say, hey, I'm my, the master of my own cluster. And uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to create a new index with uh, two shards. And um, this thing is the Elasticsearch head plugin. It's a small plugin that you can use to visualize the state of your cluster. Um, in this case, you can see our node and the uh, the index with two shards, and you can also see for each shard there is one replica that, uh, because Elasticsearch wants to replicate by default the, uh, the data once, but in this case, because we only have one node, it doesn't make sense, so the replicas be, uh, are unassigned. But if we start another node, then uh, by default it will look uh, through multicast, it will look to see if there are other nodes already available, and it, we have one, so it joins the, the cluster of the first node. And what happens next is that the uh, replicas that were previously unassigned will be created on the new node. So now uh, we want to scale out even more, so we start two other nodes. And again, they will join the cluster. And from this point on, all the shards and the replicas will be balanced across the available nodes. Any moment now. And this also happens when you scale back down. So if you shut down nodes, what happens is that if a primary shard is not available, then the rep one of the replicas will get uh, promoted to a primary, and new replicas will be automatically created, so you get back to the state that you configured. And now we should be back to the one node situation. So this was the overview of the features that we wanted to show you Oh, should I just let me? Thank you. That we want to show you from uh, Solar and Elasticsearch. Uh, but the thing to remember here is that uh, both are very active projects, are supported by strong communities. So there's juicy stuff always added to both search engines. Uh, so uh, to get you uh, some of the new juicy things that will happen here. Uh, so, for example, let's start with solar. We have the facet by function uh, issue that is being worked on, and that will promises to give us uh, a possibility of calculating facets on the on the values of return of return func by functions. So that's something something very very nice, at least in my opinion. We'll also get, which is already almost finished, the analytics component will allow us to do more ex the extended analysis of our data. So Solar will be not only search engine with some additional functionalities when it comes to data mining, but also uh, an analytics platform. Finally, hopefully for 5.0, and the talks were started, 
Uh, Solar will get to a point where Elasticsearch is right now when it comes to handling and installing. It will n become a standalone application, just like you install Elasticsearch, MySQL, or any other solutions out there. So if you so no more web app, no, apparently it will still expose a HTTP API um, because that's it's Solar, but uh, but no web app uh, there. When it comes to Elasticsearch, the thing is, remember, we mentioned grouping. So it was already committed. The top hits aggregation will give us the possibility of uh, field collapsing, aka like grouping, on distri in distributed manner. And it's coming in one tree Elasticsearch. It was committed to master already. We'll have the minimum sh should match on has child queries, which again is a nice thing, at least in my opinion. We'll be able to control that. And finally, what we wanted to say is that for filter segregation will be also available in Elasticsearch and will give us the possibility of using filters in aggregation and calculating aggregations on the basis of the filters. Uh, finally, a few words about what to choose, because those are usually the thing that come, when a co client comes to us and say, OK, which platform to choose? And we tend to say that there are very small, uh, very few showstoppers out there to tell you that you shouldn't go with that solution at all. However, there are many small differences because those are totally different products. So that's, that's how it is. If you already, at least in our opinion, if you already use Elasticsearch or Solar in your company, or in your environment, go with it. Why not? Why bother and, chew and tell DevOps to you uh, learn different things, to s learn how to scale, how to tune, how to configure it, and give them a pain, actually. They will love it for it if you'd say, ah, I'm going to, for Elasticsearch because we already use it in certain products. I'm going for Solar because of the same. So in, our, in at least the work, w the work we do, most projects will fit uh, both Solar and Elasticsearch. Uh, there are some things that can't be achieved using one or the other, but there are very few use cases that will go that way. Uh, what I would like to say is go for the one you like the best, go for the one you are ac actually familiar with, maybe, and you like to love, you love to work with, but because that's what we actually do. Yeah. So if you want to work with Elasticsearch or Solar or both, we're hiring wherever you are. And thank you very much. By the way, all the commands and uh, things we've used are available on that GitHub, GitHub account, that URL. So if you want to do the scaling for yourself, you just run a single command and it will download Sol Elasticsearch for you. It will run the commands, unpack it, index your data, and show you the scaling stuff. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> OK, we rushed we a bit. So yeah. if you have any questions, please. Uh, just hold for a moment so that I can I'll pass you a mic. I'll be a rock star from here. Radu the rock star. Um, hello. Okay. So uh, a question about scalability. Uh, you had uh, so the, the, the video on how, how to scale solar. Mm -hmm. I have the impression that you had a single point of failure in your, in your architecture there. It's uh, a, the zookeeper. Exactly. Uh, you, you can use multiple zookeepers. This, is, uh, this was only a simplicity. For simplicity reasons, I've run it with the embedded one. Actually, in production, what we would like to do is have another ensemble, so-called, with multi multiple zookeepers running and talking to each other. Appa apparently, to have an ensemble, you need at least three of them to be running. Those are really nice and light processes to run. Uh, and in production, usually you start with three because that's when you can uh, allow one to fail and still the ensemble to be available. Solar allows you to uh, give him the it uh, the uh, list of n of zookeeper addresses, so there is no a single point of failure in production. Of course, in developer mode or something like that, or like the demo here, you don't need uh, uh, um, uh, ex some additional cluster of zookeepers, but that's that's how it works. Okay. So, uh, in in your example, if uh, if the first node uh, was down, then your 
whole cluster was down. Yes, yes, this is this is how it will, would work in example because we had only a single zookeeper. In uh, that's why we didn't show uh, for simplicity reason what happens when the first node was down, how the replicas are actually taking the leader uh, the leader roles. However, it will happen automatically uh, with Sol. That's that's the whole reason why we have replicas, right? However, yeah, uh, please remember that for production you want an uh, extend external zookeeper ensemble to be running, not the one with solar. That's mm, not definitely production-wise uh, thing. Okay. I, I also want to add something uh, about Elasticsearch here. So what we didn't do when we show you the scale thing is that, um, uh, for example, if we have four clusters and uh, four uh, nodes and two can't communicate with the other two, then you'd have a split brain and that is very nasty. So what you can do to prevent that is to uh, set up the minimum master nodes configuration to more than half of your cluster. So that what 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 this does is uh, if uh, on the on the side of the split brain there are less than that configured uh, minimum master nodes, uh, as as in master eligible nodes, then uh, those nodes will not form a cluster, so that you you won't have a split brain. Okay, any more questions here on the... No? Okay. Thank you very much and enjoy the Thank rest you. of the conference. <laughs>